Can you believe it? It is week four for high school sports action. This week there was a special Monday night football game and we have highlights of that game along with several other high profile football games from around central and western Kansas. We will also be looking back at the Pawnee Heights volleyball tournament and several soccer games that took place during the week. That is only the tip of the iceberg for this week's scoreboard show. Don't go away as it all starts right now. Presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from From Rural Telephone and Next Tech, providing the region with telephone, internet, cable television, and wireless phone solutions, Rural Telephone and Next Tech proudly support public broadcasting and all ventures dedicated to improving Kansas communities. The T Bird Stream It, the sky is the limit, cloud is right along your way to your dream career. Come and see, 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 get on your way to what you want to be, Cloud County Community College. Going anywhere starts here. Dove Chevrolet, Buick Cadillac, providing sales, service, and genuine GM parts to the Golden Belt since 1957. Located at 4217 West 10th, right next to Brahms in Great Bend. Come see us. Welcome to this week's Scoreboard Show. I'm your host, Troy Waymaster. I mentioned a special Monday night football game that took place this week, and Casey will be in with highlights from that game and others that took place tonight. But why don't we take a look at some of the scores of tonight's football action to get all started this week. That was just some of the scores from tonight's football action. Did you happen to see your score? If you didn't, and you know the final score, be sure to give us a call with it. We'll be taking another look at the scores later in the show, plus they can be found on our website, scoreboardshow.tv. Well, let's get into highlights that took place earlier in the week, beginning with a volleyball tournament that was held on Saturday. The volleyball tournament was held on courts in Roselle and Burdette for the Pawnee Heights Invitational Tournament. It was Stafford, Deerfield, Maxville, and Kinsley outlasting their opponents Ashland, Western Plains, Pawnee Heights, and Chase in pool play to advance on the championship bracket being played in Roselle. First up, it was the Stafford Trojans taking on the Maxville Mustangs. 
Game one was a game of runs as both teams would go on runs until Stafford was able to pull ahead with the victory, 26 to 24. Game two, Stafford continued with their run as they earned the win with a 25-16 score. They would have to face the winner of the Kinsley versus Deerfield contest. And the first one, Deerfield looked as they were going to run away with it, but Kinsley tied it up at 17 and went on to get the win, 25 to 19. Kinsley would not let up in game two, and they would clinch the win, 25 to 16. Before moving to the championship game, we'll take a look at the third to fourth place match, the Deerfield Spartans taking on Maxwell Mustangs. In game one, they traded points with Deerfield getting the win, 26 to 24. Deerfield would continue to push in game two as the same outcome would pursue with Deerfield getting the win, 25 to 19 for third place. In the championship game, Stafford took on Kinsley. It was a very exciting contest that came down to the wire with Kinsley pulling out with a lead for the win, 26 to 24. Game two would not disappoint as Kinsley would get the win, 25 to 12, and they win the Pawnee Heights Invitational Tournament. Windy conditions are the norm for the annual Scott City Tennis Tournament, and Monday was no exception. The host Lady Beavers welcomed teams from Trigo Community, Ulysses, Liberal, Colby, Greeley County, and Garden City. Pool play started the day followed by the championship rounds. In number one singles action, Kelly Crittenden of Greeley County goes undefeated on the day to take first place over Trigo. Colby finished third over Scott City, White, Liberal was fifth with Garden City in sixth. And number one doubles, Scott City White's team of Krista Kacharek and Amelia Vasco took first over Greeley County. Colby took third over Trigo, and Liberal was fifth over Garden City. Number two singles featured Greeley County facing Scott City. White for the championship. Scott City's Diana Rodriguez came out on top. Number two doubles had Liberal versus Greeley County. Lady Jackrabbit's team of Bailey Harris and Aaron Smith went on to complete an undefeated day. Overall team scores had Greenlee County taking first, Scott City was second, and Trigo finished in third. Girls Golf on the Scoreboard Show is brought to you in part by... Dune & Peterbilt is a full-line dealer with a great lineup of new and used Peterbilt trucks. And there are some new but familiar faces in our service department. Dune & Peterbilt GMC, located at Highway 156 and 56, east of Great Bend. This week's golf action takes us to Russell for nine holes with a pair of 36. Shooting a 53 on the day, it was Jasmine Weiss of Goodland for 10th place. One stroke under her, it was her teammate, Courtney Cowan, for ninth. Seventh and eighth places shot a 51 on the day as Ashton Nicholson of Boisington took eighth and Krista Denault of Concordia took seventh. Shooting a 50 on the nine, it was Casey Garrison of Bennington in sixth. Host teams Anna Plant took fifth with a 49 and one stroke under her, it was teammate Caitlin Walker with a 48. Blakely Cooper of Boisington shot a 47 for third place. In second place, Lauren's Katie Seaman shot a 46. Troy Patachik of Russell shooting six over par with a 42, one first place. In team action, it was Hoisden and Goodland coming in with a 216 for second and third places respectively. In first place, it was the host team, Russell, with a score of 202. Great Bend Panthers versus Hayes High Indians. Let's go. Great Bend is an aggressive team and their ball control is very solid. So it was not surprising that the Panthers kept possession of the ball for most of the first half. The Indians weren't sitting down though, they certainly put Great Bend's defense through a workout. Hayes eventually got into the rhythm, but despite some good shots on goal, the first half went scoreless. Not so for the second half, as Great Bend's Oscar Torres took advantage of a deflection to put the ball in the net. Hayes surged forward to answer, but the Panthers were able to thwart them at every turn. As the clock ticked down, the game became more and more intense. When the dust settled, Great Bend was still on top, taking the game 1-0. The Thomas More Prep Marion Monarchs hosted the Mule Skinners from St. John's Military for a soccer match on Tuesday. Within the first two minutes, St. John's picks up a hands penalty, setting up this kick by TMP sophomore Toto Muran. St. John goalie Andre Popovich makes a nice stop on this shot by the Monarchs. With just under the halfway point for the first period, the Muleskers gets an own goal making the score TMP 2, St. John's 0. TMP freshman Tyler Ruschoff passes to Michael Gonzalez, 
who kicks the ball through the goalie's hands to make the score 3-0. With this corner kick, another hands penalty is called, setting up this kick by TMP's Colin Lawson. It's good making the score 4-0 in favor of TMP. With less than a minute left in the first period, St. John's lights up the scoreboard with this shot by Daniel Noyes. In the second period, TMP's Michael Gonzalez shoots the ball into the net after a corner kick. With under two minutes left in the game, St. John stays aggressive and Daniel Noyes gets another goal for the Mule Skinners. That's how it ends. Final score, TMP 5, St. John's Military 2. Our final stop for soccer this week is in Great Bend as they hosted the Red Demons from Dodge City. In the first half, Demons goalie slides out to make the save, but Michael Prado sends the ball into the net. Great Bend gets on the board first with 12.50 to play in the first half. Dodge City would kick downfield as Vicente Estrella with the kick and in for the goal, tying it up at one. The tie would remain throughout the half. However, the second half business would pick up. Jose Mijares would get the loose ball and sit it soaring past the goalie and in for the goal. With Great Bend up by one, Enrique Gaikin would try to gain a larger lead, but the Red Demons would stop it. Dodge City would realize that they would have to kick it up, and Rene Rodriguez would do just that as he sends it soaring over the leaping goalie and in for the tying goal. Great Bend would not be happy. They would work it downfield to Oscar Torres, who lets it fly in for the goal. 3-2 with a little excessive celebrating with 8.35 to go in the contest. Then with just seconds to go, Dodge City with the corner kick. Header, no. Great Bend wins 3-2. Hill City hosted their annual cross-country meet at Prairie Trails Golf Course on Thursday. Boys and girls varsity and junior varsity as well as a junior high race were run. First place was the girls varsity. The top teams were Oakley, Colby, Wheatland Grinnell, Decatur Community, and Hill City. Colby's Amelia Finley led the way and finished with a time of 16.25, 12 seconds ahead of second place. Leslie Van Lonen of Hill City. Eileen Mick of Osborne took third. Plainville's Cassidy Rathman was fourth. Haley Ribordi of Oakley took fifth. Taylor Tustin of Wheatland Grinnell finished in sixth. The boys' varsity race was led by Northern Valley runner Gunnar Hayes, who finished with a time of 17-18, 17 seconds, ahead of second place winner Tyler Shields of Decatur Community. Hoxie's Luke Fries finished third. Shane Jones of Hill City took fourth. Dublaine Wohler of Victoria was fifth, and Phyllis Bird's Wyatt Ratchliff took sixth. The team scores had Decatur Community taking first, Victoria in second, Colby third, Phyllis Bird fourth, Landville fifth, Stockton took sixth, and Osborne was in seventh. That is a look at some of the events from this past week. We still have highlights from the Monday night football game to bring you. So on that note, Case will be right in after this short break to bring you those highlights and several other highlights from highly anticipated games of the week. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from... Bethany College is helping me begin my path in life. I'm a student whose professors get to know me. I'm an athlete competing for the Swede. And I'm a community member involved in something bigger than myself. Are you ready to explore your path? Exhibit Customs does cars and trucks, wheels, tires, truck accessories, audio, video, subs and amps. It's not just the products they offer, it's the service behind the products. Get it tough, get it loud, get it mean, get it downright bad. Exhibit Customs, you're an individual, prove it. Welcome back to the Scoreboard Show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Casey McAvoy, and we've got some exciting games to get to tonight. We'll hit it hard with highlights from around the area after a short break. So why go away when I know you want to stay right here and find out who won the crowns in some of tonight's homecoming games, right? We'll be back. Football action on Scoreboard Show is brought to you in part by Simpson Farm Enterprises of Ransom, Hayes, Great Bend, and Beloit, your local spray coop and Apache dealer. Oh, 
side action. Hill City senior Dylan Anderson under center. Will toss left to senior Matt Craig, and he'll run it in for the score. Craig, Craig had 12 rushes for 61 yards on the night. Anderson on the quarterback keeper here, turns back right, leaps over the defender, drags number 22, Colby Faber, for a couple extra yards on a nice 12-yard run. In the shotgun, Anderson, who was 7 for 10 on the night for 149 yards in the air, will find Solomon Wilson in the middle of the field, who caught 144 yards for the night. And the quarterback becomes a kicker. Eric Perez on the return, finds a hole, and finally brought down by Anderson after a nice return. St. John's a Beloit on offense, and Trey Dubert goes back to pass, scrambles right, finds Riley Gates for the score of the night, and that was their only one. Back to Hill City O. Anderson to pass, and deep down the near sideline, he has Wilson open. Defender is diving for the tackle, but unsuccessful, as it's another ring neck touchdown. St. John's scrambles looking for an open receiver, and will keep it, and instead eat a Chase Smith and Dylan Anderson sandwich. Anderson here, looking for somewhere to throw the ball, feels the pressure and takes off. Stiff arm here, stiff arm there. He brings it to the near sideline, makes the safety miss the tackle, cuts back to the middle, and he's gone. Six more for Hill City. Plenty of time this go around for Anderson. He goes deep down the far sideline and Wilson racking up the yak before Jordan Hake brings him down. Anderson again going to keep the ball and the ring next score again as he drags the defenders into the end zone on a solid run. Point after attempt, Riley Gates smells that one out. Anderson to the ground before he knows what to do with the ball. And freshman quarterback Ethan Gansel gets a snap here. Greg Billups pounds his way in for the score. And in the Kansas Preps game of the week, Plainville takes on Smith Center. Alex Hobbleman gives to Jason Kugler for a short gain. Kyle Becker for the Plainville Cardinals, Dalton Warner, and ladies and gentlemen, he could go all the, yeah, he goes all the way, but this one's going to be called back, but we'll let it last. Next play, Truett Coleman, finding holes, and he's going to find the end zone for the Smith Center Redmen. Alberman, he's going to keep it. Nolan Weissner on the tackle here for the Plainville Cardinals. And Coleman again, finding more ways to rack up yards. He's going down the far sideline and he's going to be very, very untouched for the score. Oh, the Redmen chop. Field goal attempt, Kale Terrell, and it's good. But homecoming for the Redmen was no reason to celebrate as they fell short 30 to 23. Your homecoming royalty, Patrick Prescott and Krista Milton for the St. John Tigers as they take on the unbeaten Skyline Thunderbirds. Kinzer Christman gives to Patrick Prescott, kicks it outside, and he gets the first down. And more. Dalen Chain on the tackle. Christman has Schuler, and he's in for the touchdown. Skyline's Brandon Rose takes it up the middle. And Schuler Brown on the tackle. Brennan Scotts almost loses his feeding, but stumbles in for the score. Skyline to kick off. Bros. And he's got a fumbling squabble kick. But Prescott's going to return. And he's going to bring it down the near sideline. And nobody's going to catch up to him. And Prescott for the touchdown. St. John Tigers. Final score, 22 to 40. St. John with the victory. More homecoming royalty to Thunder Ridge King and Queen. Joel Struckoff and Breck Miner apparently think they're on the kiss cam. Otis first play, fumble. And Garrett Kruger recovers for the Longhorns. Blaine Raby gives to the King. Joel Struckoff and he's in for the score. Horrible Elvis impersonation. Otis tries to respond, and Patrick Piper on the long ball has a little answer with this reception. Trevor Keller gives to Piper, and he's in. Raby, keeper, and he's going to take it to the house down the near sideline, and no Otis Bison Cougar is going to catch him. Touchdown, the Thunder Ridge. 
Keller going to option to Piper. Good blocking up front, and Austin Herman finally gets him down. More of the Piper following blocks and scoring touchdowns. However, Thunder Ridge would win this one, 44 to 18. It is definitely a homecoming night. More royalty hoping to protect the Cardinal Castle in Hoisington. Derek Kaiser to pass over defender and has Cody Steller for the Steller touchdown. Ulysses on offense. And we've got a pass down the middle. Ulysses ranked number five in 4A, just brought down at the one yard line, but they'll kick it in for the score. Kaiser back to pass, and it's picked off. Oh, and it's picked off, and he will not take this back to the house, but close enough, knocked out of bounds. Ulysses up to pass again, deep down the middle, and he's wide open. Number two is going to take it in for the score. Kaiser gives the 27 up the middle. First down, Cardinals. Kaiser tries to avoid the sack, and he should have not taken that shovel pass. Instead, he throws a pick six. Ulysses, defensive touchdown. Kaiser passed up the middle and it's a good 35 to 40 yard gain for number 27 of the Hoisington Cardinals. And Kaiser again to Stellar again and that's a Cardinal score. Ulysses, however, would run away with this one, 34 to 13. Homecoming for Hayes High, Cody Lobers and Dustin Petz lead the Indians on the field as they're hopeful for a homecoming victory. Unrein hands to David Cardinal. This kid is a good runner. He's going to take it down to the far sideline, kicking it outside. Number nine, Grayson Temple on the tackle. Unrein sweep right. And he got the stiff arm there. And number 14, Jake Coran finally brings him down. Buffalo's on O. Coran, far sideline. Pass has Taylor Kemp. And he's going to dive in for the touchdown. Garden City, Buffalo. And the Hayes crowd is stunned. Coran to Gerardo Holgren up the middle for a nice game. Coran pass, far sideline. Tyson Phyllis breaks a tackle, has a first down. Finally, Jake Sedbrook brings him down. Coran looking to pass again. And again, he finds Holgren for the touchdown. That's a disappointing homecoming loss for the Indians as they lose 24 to 21. And here is another look at other area games from around our area. Have a good night, I'm Casey McAvoy.
presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from... From Rural Telephone and Next Tech, providing the region with telephone, internet, cable television, and wireless phone solutions, Rural Telephone and Next Tech proudly support public broadcasting and all ventures dedicated to improving Kansas communities. The T-Bird stream it, the sky is the limit, cloud is right along your way to your dream career. Come and see, 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 get on your way to what you want to be, Cloud County Community College, going anywhere starts here. Dove Chevrolet Buick Cadillac, providing sales, service, and genuine GM parts to the Golden Belt since 1957. Located at 4217 West 10th, right next to Brahms in Great Bend. Come see us. Well, wrapping up week four and looking forward to week five, it is hard to tell what the football rankings will do next week. But one thing is for sure, our cameras will be out capturing highlights to bring you on next week's school board show. To find out what will be for next week's football games and other events throughout the week, you can find out by following us on Twitter or by checking out our website at scoreboardshow.tv. Until next time, remember to put on your game face, make up a sign, or just do anything to get the attentions of our cameras, and we just might see you on the School Board Show. Take care, and good night. <laughs>